Hello, record button. So, yeah, we have a room full of people. <laughs> um, first question, so I'm going to talk about HyperKitty. First question is, who has already seen one of my talks about HyperKitty? You do? You do, I know you do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you do. All right, cool, so a lot of new people. Um, I will give a brief presentation of what the, the state of our mailing list is. It will be s quick, because you all know what it looks like. And then I'll show you where we're going to. So first, who am I? Uh, my name is Aurélien. Uh, you can call me Aurélien or anything that is, e e that is easy to pronounce for an English-speaking person. <laughs> um, I'm in Paris. I've been contributing to Fedora for a long time. And I've been in the engineering team since uh, 2012. So it's been three years. I'm, I'm the lead developer of HyperKitty. I'm trying to uh, help fix the mailing list problem that we all know about or guess at uh, with the help of a lot of people here, like this person here, and, and her name, numerous interns that have been helping me over the years. For example, Karen. Uh, she was there last luck. She's a very interesting person. Worked on the design. Um, so that mainly consists of development of HyperKitty, the writing the code, deployment, and mentoring people, communication, mm -hmm. which is not my first part, um, and all the rest as usual for a software project. So this is what we're going to talk about. Um, I'll, I will try to give a, a demo of what we have ri right now if the network does not fail, which is always the case, the case at a conference. So. We'll see how it works. So Mainman 2.1 is the current version that we are all using all over the world. It's, it is a maintenance branch. It has seen one release a year, about once one release a year since 2006, so it's kind of outdated. Uh, it's a very monolithic package that was designed in the last century. <laughs> um, it's, uh, so it's, it has a mailing list engine, and there is a, a web archiver that produces static HTML. It has a web admin interface that is CGI based. It's a lot of 90s era technologies. The problem with that, yeah, I've just said it. Um, CGI is not very nice for admins. They don't like it a lot, especially in the SE Linux days. They hate it. Um, HTML, well, static HTML, we've done better over the years. And it's a lot of different environments and skill sets that are necessary, uh, a lot of different technologies. So the people who write that and maintain that don't know all the ends of everything that they are um, dealing with. So it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to do. Main, main, main three tries to fix all that. It's a much modern and modular design. Uh, there are a lot of improvements that you will see when we switch to it, which is so. Um, first, you will not get an email every month. Yeah, no more happy mail Monday. Yeah, exactly. You will not receive your plain text password via email every month. So that's even better. Um, uh, more for, for the server interested people, there's a REST API, which is very extendable. You can do a lot of things via the REST API. Actually, the web admin interface only uses this REST API. So Everything you can do in the web interface, you can do via the REST API. It's very, very easy to extend it, to, to work with. It, it uh, handles virtual domains, so you can have uh, one server that handles federal.federalproject.org or Federal Infra Cloud or Federal Hosted or Federal Anything and other domains. Pagger wants to, Pagger.io wants to go into that too, so we can have virtual domains um, very easily. Um, it handles the concept of having one single user with multiple addresses, so you can be subscribed to different mailing lists with different addresses, and it will reconcile all that and let you handle your preferences globally. Um, it's been released, it has been released this year, uh, in April, just after PyCon, which was uh, in Montreal. It has been released in a form that is considered good for new installations. Uh, the mailman team right now does not feel like the 3.0 release is uh, easy to upgrade uh, from the mailman to the one, but I've been working on a lot of that upgrade procedure and I think for Fedora we can do it. 
and we've been doing it recently. So HyperQV, what it is? It's an archival plugin, plugin for Mailman 3. So uh, the idea is that um, in Mailman 3 you have this Mailman core that is, doing with, that is dealing with the routing of emails and the distribution and the handling of error and all that stuff. And you have two web interfaces that are different. The, web, the, the admin interface is, um, is connecting to, to Mailman via the REST API, with, as we said before. And you can have any number of archivers that are all independent. And the main one is HyperKitty. It's, uh, so it's just a plugin, but it's a big one. Um, and you can have other archivers, or you can, do, you can write plugins that work like archivers, but actually do other things. Uh, Ralph here wrote a plugin that gets the email from, yeah, that's this guy in green, uh, that gave the email from, the, from Mailman and, and routes them as fed messages. So you can do that too. It's very easy to extend. Well, you wrote the code, but. <laughs> um, Mail, uh, HyperKitty is a web app. It's based on Python and Django. Uh, the emails are stored in a SQL database, in a SQL database. It runs a lot of uh, some analysis and statistics over them, and uh, and it looks like a, some sort of web forum, but not only a web forum. It has a full text search engine that can search across the lists, so you don't have to. Or if you don't know in if you don't know the exact mailing list where an email was sent, you can just search globally and it will find that email. That is very interesting for private lists, which are not archived by global search engines such as Google. Um, it has a lot of modern web features like favoriting posts and liking, disliking, and all that stuff. And it's very, it's, it's mobile friendly, you will see that. So I have this nice drawing of what happens when you receive an email in main entry. So you get the email from Postfix, for example. Um, I think that Exim is supported, but not as well as, post as Postfix right now. So, well, we use Postfix anyway. It receives the email via uh, LMTP to, into Mailman Tree that has its own database. And um, the emails are stored into HyperKitty via the Archiver uh, API. So HyperKitty stores the, the email itself into its database. And you have, then you have the friendly users who go into HyperKitty and request uh, the status of the, of the mailing list, uh, the archives. Uh, HyperKitty has its own REST API that you can interact with with scripts if you want to get the emails or get, get information such as uh, what email was, uh, which was the top uh, posted email this, this week or this, uh, this month, who uh, favorited, uh, well, who, what was uh, liked a lot this month, this kind of thing. Then you have posters, the admin UI, which is uh, an, 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 a, new, a UI for other people, it's for REST admins. And the, the, both of them inter interact with Mailman 3 via the REST API. And of course, you can have your friendly sysadmins who write scripts to interact with the REST API. So that's the main, the main center of action with our uh, uh, Yes? The REST API, is that just for administrators, or do the end users have, have access to the REST API? This one here? This one here is only for administrators, um, or yeah, for the local administrators. Okay, how about the, the one on HyperKitty? The one, for Hi the one in HyperKitty is, uh, uh, is authenticated in the same way as HyperKitty, so you get the same permissions. So you can use that. Perfect. Sure. That's solid. But you can do less than, in, well, well you can do different things. But, but I can query it and say, hey, what was the most hated email this month? Yeah, you can do that. What was the most, most liked email this month? Which, which email might have been tagged? Right, it hasn't been a real priority, I would say, in my development plan these the days. But, but, yeah. It, the, the, the possibility exists. Yeah, yeah, I, I, can, I, I can prove this. So. Um, Sorry, I'm straight. No, no, good, no, good, good. Um, if you have questions, interrupt me. That's fine. Uh, I will get back to my talk. I, I'd rather you interrupt me than you store your question for later and never ask it. About deployment now. Um, for new instances of Mailman 3, well, I have written a small, like a small bundle script that uh, will install Mailman 3 and HyperKit and Postoris at the same time in the same um, environment, virtual environment. It's all very well integrated and ready to go, so you can do your proof of concept in install with that. It's, uh, it, it w it's working and it's uh, what the Mailman team recommends to install uh, new stuff. 
Of course, for real production deployment, you will probably want to have something more isolated and more, uh, um, well, that you will integrate with your own infrastructure. So you, want, you will probably want the separate projects in, into separate environments. Uh, I have RPMs for L7 that are working. Uh, they, are, they are also working with SE Linux enabled, so you can use that if you want. I have RPMs for Fedora, but those are a bit old. I need to update, update them. Um, it, the migrations are really simplified uh, for real production deployment. I have a few scripts that are, uh, that are available. And I have written several playbooks for the Fedora infrastructure that you can reuse. Um, most of the Fedora infra specific uh, parts are uh, exported to variables like the server names and the database name and all that stuff. So you can use this. I'm, I'm not sure you can just take them and apply them, but it will be very easy to adapt. So that's what it looks like currently. It's just a screenshot. I'll show you the real version. Um, that's the main page. It's not the main. It's not the most. Well, it's still a very big improvement over what we had before. Um, so, the, at a first glance, what you can see is that you have an idea of which lists are the most interesting and, w and what activity you have in them. Um, well, this one here had a big spike of, of activity recently. Uh, this devil list has a lot of activities that is evenly uh, distributed, and you have all those sorted, uh, sorted by uh, what is the most popular. You can sort by different criteria, and you can filter them, so you can get a shorter view. Uh, by default, you will hide the inactive list, so you don't have all those uh, inactive lists cluttering your, your, your screen. Mm. And it will hide the private list by default if you're not logged in. Um, so you don't, yeah. It's protected, but you, it, it will not mess up your view. Um, this is the front page, and this is what it looks like when you go into, uh, with a, when you go and visit it with a mobile view, on a mobile, on a mobile phone, for example, or a tablet. Um, so this collapses nicely into something that you can use. And I'll, I'll show you a more in-depth demo, but I, uh, this is interesting to see if you, if you want to use it. So you will able, be able to browse your mailing list with your phone, yay. Currently in the Fedora infrastructure, we have four servers deployed. Um, we have, there's a development server that I'm using, uh, there's a staging server, and we have two production servers. Um, we are deploying via RPMs, because that's our policy in the Fedora infrastructure. And we're using uh, Ansible playbooks. As I said, it's mainly using roles, so you could, you could extract those roles and use them. Oh no, I don't have to press this thing. Right. Um, if you want to try HyperKitty and, and check it out, you can use the staging server. This is one of this address here. Well, that's until your favorite mailing list is migrated, which is going to happen soon. Um, it mirrors the, the Fedora mailing list. It's a manual process right now because I don't want to have something automatic uh, SSHing into a production server from a staging server. Uh, that will not be very nice, so it's manual. So sometimes you will see um, emails, well, you will see that the latest emails were like a week ago because I didn't do the, I didn't run the script, but that's at least that's a good, way, a good enough way to test HyperKey. The productions are, the production servers are real functional mainland tree instances. Um, there is a test mainland tree list that you can use if you want to just try it out with no consequences. Um, and we, I have written a few scripts to transition from the old servers to the new ones. So when your mailing lists or your mailing, right, when your mailing or your mailing lists are migrated uh, to the new server, uh, I will first notice you, <laughs> and then you will uh, you will see that the transition is actually um, you will get a lot of, redir uh, of redirections that will um, um, that will avoid you being lost between the old server and the new server. So it should be pretty transparent for you. And there are a few lists that are migrated already. Um, most of them are automatic lists, like SCM commits and commit lists. Uh, but we have the infrastructure list that has been migrated very, very, very recently, <laughs> like last week. <laughs> and it's working, and people are actually communicating with it, and it's, it's, it's working. I've been migrating a few lists over the last weeks. And the only roadblocks that we've hit is a feature that is not yet into mainland 3. It's a, it's a feature that is called topic, um, 
yeah, to, uh, topic lists, and it's very, it, we don't use it a lot. We use it only for one list, to my knowledge, which is package announce list. It's a feature that will let the list admin define subtopics based on, um, based on the subject of the emails, and people can subscribe to those topics in, instead of subscribing to the whole list, and they will only get uh, emails that match the topic that have se they have selected. That's so a we fork of Mailman to one on the sisters list, right? Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes? Sorry, sorry if I missed this, and I'm still in the post-launch kind of age, so. Um, but, so say a group wanted to migrate to Mailman 3 now, mm -hmm. what would be the, or, or you're starting up a new list, what would be the process for getting on Mailman 3 and hibernating instead of that? Well, first I would recommend uh, inst uh, using the, the bundler script, which is called Mailman Bundler. You will well, find it. I mean, for Fedora, for List. Oh, for a list? Like, let's say Fedora Cloud decided we are all in and we love this and we really do okay. want to start using it. How do we, what's the procedure for, for moving? Uh, you talk to me. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just, I have a very small procedure to migrate lists and uh, I, I just do it. But uh, yeah, you just ask me. <coughs> I'll be very happy to have new Guinea, um, users. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, 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 yes. Um, so yes, well, this topic features is not very uh, widely used in the Fedora infrastructure, but uh, when I migrated this package list, a lot of people were complaining that they were getting all the emails for all the, uh, the released version of Fedora, and they were not very happy about that, so I rolled it back. And I'm waiting, this feature will be implemented um, as, well, differently, uh, as the result of a Google Smurf code project this year, so it's gonna wait a bit, but we can migrate all the other lists and, and wait for this to be done, to migrate packages, package amounts. What's done right now is a lot of commit lists, as I said, um, most, I think all of them, uh, and the, the infrastructure list. There's a few things to watch out for when you migrate a list. Um, first, the X being there header that was added to, um, to emails by Mailman 2.1 is not added by Mailman 3 anymore because it's been deprecated for years, but no one knew it since there was no release. Um, so this has been replaced by a list ID. So if you were, if you were doing your filters on the been there, uh, you will have to edit your filters and, and use list ID instead. It's a fairly simple thing. A lot of uh, people from the infrastructure have done it already. Um, most web you, w most web mails use list ID anyway, so if you were using Zimbra, or I, I think I think Gmail does it uses list ID too. Uh, it's just like a lot of some people who are using proc mails and were manually filtering on X bin there will have to change their rules. So yeah, that's things change over 15 years. Um, yes, and there is no list topics yet, but it's going to happen um, probably in September when the Google Summer of Code. So what we're going to do next, uh, we have a few technical improvements to do. Uh, we were doing our CSS with less and it's getting a bit, uh, it, it's been, it's not outdated, but uh, SAS is getting really getting traction and less needs, uh, requires us to have a node on the server, which is not very nice, uh, not JS. Um, so it's n um, some, some administrators are not very happy about the list of dependencies that comes with it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll probably change that. Uh, we're all using Bootstrap as a framework for CSS, so it should be not too hard to change. Because Bootstrap supports CSS, so, yeah. Um, there is a new attachment system that I, uh, I was, uh, I'm going to write. Uh, currently, you can't add an attachment when you reply from the, from the web interface. Did I mention that you can reply from the web interface? I probably didn't mention that. Yo, okay. Uh, I, okay, so that's one of the main improvements, well, one of the uh, nice improvements of HyperKitty over the previously static HTML that you can actually reply from the web. You can, uh, you, you, you'll see you have a reply button that you, that you can use and, and, and post your emails from the web. But you cannot attach anything right now, so that's something that I'm going to, to add next. That's a feature that I've been requested a lot of time, but it's more complicated than it looks. Um, the previous mailman 
uh, web interface allowed people to download the mbox file for the list, which is just an mbox file with all the, um, so just a mailbox file with all the emails in the list. Um, this has not been implemented yet into HyperKitty because um, since the, all the emails are into the database, it has to be built on the fly and can be a pretty hard load on the server. Uh, so uh, I want to make something a bit as asynchronous that will not uh, cause a lot of load for the server. So it's taking a, a bit more time than expected. And then, since it's all out, um, I should help uh, people, well, we should help people uh, um, install it. And so there are a lot of mainland communities across the world that would be interested in that. I've been contacted by the Apache Software Foundation, by a lot of people, uh, a very large group of people who use Mailman in France too. Um, some organizations are really eager to, to move to, uh, to Mailman, and Red Hat, of course, is inter interested too. So, no, uh, uh, what? Sorry? Gnome is? Okay, cool, perfect. More people, yeah. And, um, and yeah, some people will also be happy to see images, uh, like virtual images um, that set up Mailman and HyperKey and Postorius in a, um, in a nice container that could be used. So um, I have I've had someone um, propose me to, to write Docker image, an ima uh, Docker image for uh, Mailman and HyperKey, but it had it doesn't have any results yet, and I think the guy didn't reply back to me. So. If someone wants to do that, it's open. So on the technical side, you can help by testing the thing, of course, trying the installation, trying to do strange things that I haven't thought of, which is probably a lot of things. Um, you, if you know Django very well, you probably know of a lot of optimization that I haven't yet put into use. Uh, there is a lot of stat uh, statistical analysis that, are that is very interesting to do on mailing lists because a lot of people use it. A lot of people use mailing lists for very strange personal and, um, and social things that are very interesting to analyze. Um, people talking to each other on public lists, it's always very interesting to analyze. Um, for example, that. Um, you can, if you have an idea about, uh, if you know uh, virtual virtualization and Docker very well, we would be interested in that too. But it's not only about technical issues. You can, um, if you have design ideas uh, to improve the main list usability, I'm sure Maureen and, and I would be very interested. You still have a lot of ideas on your website about, uh, about what we can do, but you know, so if, if other people have other ideas, it's all to me. And in, t in tutorials for installation. It has evolved a bit. Uh, over the, the installation has been has made has been made easier and easier, but it's still it's interesting to have tutorials, and it will probably make people more comfortable installing it. So, so now to the demo! Yay! Um, if the staging version, that's the address. If you want to try it, um, we have documentation here. And that's the new, where, that's the place where we have the code with all the rest of the mailman project. So that's where you'll find the mailman bundler project too in the GitLab mailman group. So I'll show you that. Okay, what do I probably need to do that? Okay. Move it out. Okay. Oh, that is kind of outdated. No, it will get better. Oh yeah, that's old. Okay, cool. Oh, I'll show you. I'll show you the real one. So you, it will be even more interesting. Um, the new. The, I'll show you the infrastructure one. So that is the infrastructure list that I've been migrated recently. I don't need you, thanks. 
So at, uh, at a glance, you can see um, if, if there were big spikes, of course, recently. That's over the last. The, all this is data over the last 30 days. You can have. You can see who is the most active posters, and how many posts they have sent. Um, um, what can I say about this? Uh, I'm logged in with my email address, so I can uh, go directly to the discussion that I have posted to, which is very useful. All this this gray envelope here um, shows the topics that I haven't yet seen. So if I go to this one here, for example, I can read this topic and all the new emails and all that stuff. Yeah. And I have, uh, if there are new emails in this thread, I will, I, I can go to them directly with uh, using this key here. So yeah. I can reply to this discussion, but I'll go to the, to the other one. Uh, yeah, move to main entry. So I can say that this has been uh, inactive for a day, and it's a discussion that is seven days old. That's also useful. And And for example, if I want to add something to that, I can reply to this email here. Say, hey guys, I'm currently mo Oops. in this list. Say hi. Um, so I could, um, I can reply directly in line. If I like to use my email client better, I can just click here and it will generate the proper, uh, it will, the proper link with the proper headers that will actually put the email back into the thread. Um, I can create a new thread if I think that's more relevant and change the subject if necessary. I can send that, yay. Your reply has been sent, and since that was so extremely useful, and I, I will like my own post, and now that I've liked a post, I can, I can go to my profile, for example, see that the th see which, which thread I have read over the over, over time, see my votes, the, this post that I've just liked or cancelled, see my subscriptions. See my favorites? Oh yeah, I didn't show you that I can favorite this uh, thread. So let's go back to it. I can favorite the thread. And now uh, I will get it back. I will get it in my favorite list here. So this is very, is, yeah, it's not inactive yet. It's not active anymore because I've just sent an email into it. Oh yeah. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, what else can I show? Um, for so example, see, when, I, when I hit the reply, because yeah. I don't, FAS has my email address as something that is not what I use. Yes. My app for a project that mm -hmm. I run. So it subscribed, and I don't, I don't know if this is good or not, but it subscribed my fake email address. Ah. Which is just, I never give it out. I just use the okay. project as a forward. So it subscribed at the same time I posted the reply. Yeah. Which is nice because you don't have to go through the subscription part, but. Yeah, you you'll probably have to go back to your subscription list and, and edit. Yeah. Uh, so. But, but it knows that I'm me, so I just have to change the address. Yeah, and you can you can go to subscribe to this list, the bu the button here, and 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 change the subscription and change okay. the which address you're subscribed with. It's uh, so nice to just be able to post yeah. I can never remember, you know. Yeah, so, so yeah, when you reply to a list that you have, are not subscribed to, it will subscribe you with non-delivery option. So you will not get them into your email. It's, it supposes that you want to check, if, since you've been in the, into the web interface, you want, to, uh, you want to just use the web to browse this list. So that's easier when you just want to interact w quickly with the mailing list and you don't want to get the flow of emails. Um, if it's a private list, of course, it will just say something like, 
your email must be, or your subscription must be approved, or your email must be approved, or something like this, because you you can't um, you can't be automatically automatically sub subscribed to a private list, of course. Um, so there are a few corner cases, but it usually works. Um, yeah, you can add text to to a list. Say, oh, very interesting. And everybody can add text to a um, to a list, so that's can make it easier. Um, what else can I show? Oh yeah, um, searching. So on the mailing on the federal for list, we've been talking about flock. I can search for flock and and get a list of emails that are uh, relevant to flock. Uh, it's sorted by uh, relevance. It's uh, of the plain text search engine, but you can ch uh, search by the by date. You can order by date if you want. If that's easier. Okay, uh, let's go back to the list of you. Oh yeah, and the show you the um, I'll show you the mobile view. Um, so yeah, you can see you can you can see it collapse when the screen size changes into something that you can actually use. So that will be you will have the same categories here. Um, and you will have tabs for, for the statistics. And discussions in mobile. And this will collapse into a menu that you can use too. So currently it works. Um, the only problem that we've had is the X bin, head, bin there header that people are, uh, uh, that some people use. Um, there's a sort of minor bug that sometimes uh, blocks main entry, but I've found a way to reproduce it this morning, so I'll, I'll fix it. Uh, otherwise, it's all good. And if if you want to uh, to try this new interface, well just you know ask me, come to me, and, and I'll move your lists. Yeah, that's about it. If you have questions, go ahead. We, st we still have a lot of time, so if you want to see things and try things by yourself, feel free to. Sorry? Is there going to be like a project where it's like they do all the lists of mail entry or say, can I just say, hey, let's put text on mail entry? Yeah, you can say that. I don't think we have, we can, <laughs> uh, we will send an email to the list first and explain what's, what's going on and see. And so, uh, but I don't have, a, we don't have, well, the idea is not to get a, a big date where everybody's switching at the, uh, switches at the same time. We're just moving list one at a time. It's, we can do it, and I think it's better than having a big day switch where everybody is uh, concerned and, and surprised. And, and, uh. Just, yeah, I, I wanted to get it off that mailman address, so if we can do that, so we can get it. Sure, yeah, yeah, more people, nice. Um, I think it's better to get one list at a time and yeah, see sure. how that goes. Yeah. And then we can, this way we can see which lists are aren't very active and aren't, you know, lagging behind. Right. Yes? Are we now creating new lists only on the online? That is, that's a good question. I think we should, we should yeah. I think we should. I think we should. Yep. Yes? Isn't that a lot of lists once you migrate it? Like, you can drag pictures to like, file tickets somewhere? So there's, like, a queue of... There isn't something like that at the moment, but we should maybe... Yeah, we sh I think we should send an, e an email to, uh, to like, the whole list and tell, to tell them, yeah. file ticket if you want to, to move your list. Infrastructure, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we, yeah, we can do that. We can. I can extract the list of of, uh, of lists that have been migrated and put that into Wiki, and uh, keep that to date. Yeah, that's easy to do. Yes. Kind of an UI idea. Yeah. So we were just talking about we should migrate design teams. 
uh-huh. but would be really nice because right now, like we have a lot of discussions, and then somebody we don't tend to put too many attachments because our graphics tend to be very large. Mm-hmm. So we'll put a link to like Image UR or Sensei mm-hmm. or something. So we can have inline images. So mm-hmm. when we post a link to an image, oh, it yeah. displays in the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I it mean, would be amazing. Um, just and yeah, there are a few things to make sure of. Like, it's race. not if, make sure it's not a huge image that will right. destroy the, 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 the layout. But why not? Yeah, okay. sure, that could be something. And you could have them like at the bottom of the emails, like inline images, and, and, and get them all there. Can you send me an email about that? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. That will be, um, that's, uh-huh, that's a, a, a kind of worm that I'm not sure I should open. <laughs> um, I, the, the question of um, rich formatting is very touchy for a lot of people in mailing lists. <laughs> uh, uh, I've seen people, uh, I, I, well, some people have uh, told me You'd better not make an an, uh, an HTML editor into the thing because otherwise I will never use it. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. Maybe uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, then trying to detect Markdown, maybe I don't know. I don't. Know. That could be fun though, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe something like you know those those JavaScript plugins that inspect uh, areas and turn them into into rich text if, if they find it, if they find something interesting in it. Like, you know, what to do with the code. Um, I, I think it's a minefield, but, <laughs> you know, we can try. Maybe later. <laughs> yeah, maybe later. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we make it so much easier because that's what yeah. we have two problems RFC and mailing lists. Mm-hmm. Designers don't understand it either. Yeah. So if they could just go to the website and just talk, then it's, it's going to solve some of the problems for them. Inlining images, that should be not too hard. Yeah, so uh, can, can I take a look at it? You know, and then using Zoos advice for painting our pictures, the edge. It's always uh, just just have a look at it, and you know you, you want to use a pace. Well, you know, like they'll give you a directory, and then there's like ten things. It's like, well, which one do you want me to talk about? Yeah. Right. So yeah. we people yeah. just and, when, and if it's because there's, I'm gonna say this, and people are gonna think I'm awful. I used the Mac once ten years ago, okay, and I had this IRC co- client called Colloquy, and the one this is like the only thing I've ever liked about anything Mac is this one client in an IRC channel. Now, you have to be in okay channels. There's channels you don't want this to happen. <laughs> but if somebody posted a link to an image, it would just load it in line in the channel log. Mm-hmm. And it was so much easier to like, call the conversation. I don't have to like, open up an image or whatever. And that's, it was just dead simple. It's just if it ended in not .png, not .gif, or not .jpeg, which I could just do it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't need to be anything complex. Right. Yeah, why not? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be hard. Yeah, maybe I want to store it on the server. Not really. I can't oh, still do there? something. I, I don't know. I'll see. I'll, I'll think what the if it maybe it's not necessary to, necessary to to store well, it. Well, it's for historical purposes. But like for our purposes, well, the link is the link is still there. Yeah. 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 I mean, one right now. Yeah. If you walk on the Fedora twenty three uh, wallpaper, so you can paste the URL to the chip you know, you cannot see in chip a picture that's I have to see, so I always have to download it. And, and then, which uh, version was now right. from the do- download in the last one? You know? 
Right. Yeah, like, we're always just throwing out ideas. So like, we don't really need a historical record of, oh, what was the 20th version of that thing that we did that we talked about? So if we go back to the archives and try to look at it, we don't need it. I mean, other people might want it. But, but the, the, um, it's, a, it's just a, a web link to an, to an image outside, posted yeah. outside. So if the external host goes down, the image gets just deleted. Yeah, okay, I don't have to catch it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yes, Ralph. I think we hear in our discussion there's a security issue with that, where if someone gets linked to an image that's not really an image and then causes browser to try yeah. to so uh, get, get around this by copying the image to a server and they make sure on the server that it's really an image and they switch the link out. Oh, yeah, because the other thing people can do is they send out an image and then that tracks who visited it, right? That too, yeah. yeah. So we don't want privacy issues with that. They would have to, okay, you could make it pull the image. My, I guess my concern with images is somebody, like, you know, if a lot of people are viewing through the interface, somebody might start sort of like sending goats in the community. Yeah, but, but we, we have moderation stuff, so we can so kind of shut it down, right? I mean. Can you delete an image or something in a, an attachment to an email so it's not displayed if it's. Mm. Or, or, or it's just in a, a per list setting, say for this list that we turn on the email. Right, and like if the design list wants that, but then somebody subscribes and trolls, is there a way to go through and just say, you know, what, um, Where are we at with moderation stuff right now? This is probably. Well, there is no moderation, no hyperkill specific moderation, okay. so it's, ju it's just payments. So, so yeah. it's oh, no, we, 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 we would need the moderation too. Yeah. Uh, because we have on the design list one person, I moderate each name, I say. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, because for those. So if he has this guy on moderation, it wouldn't show up in Hyperkitty until he approves it in Postorius. You would need to approve emails yeah. anyway. So if you have like bad people, like not bad people, people who behave badly, <laughs> you put them on moderation. It, it's not going to stop random spammers, but if you have good rules set up in, your, in place by default, it should be okay. Hopefully. But yeah, that's something like a future feature. Yeah, it can it can become a bit hairy. But like it's some people, it. I I've seen this happen before with with our mailing list. Like they'll send something to a mailing list, and it's innocuous. There's nothing wrong with it. They'll get very upset because then it gets archived on the internet, and they want us to like pull it down. So yeah, there's a way to like just delete. Those I don't I don't think there's currently a way to delete a post right. from Hyperkitty. Right, once it's at other servers, yeah, you can not you can not delete. Period. Yeah, there is yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. There's currently no way to delete a post in Hyperkitty, but if it's there's always an exception. Traditionally, there has been. Well, not traditionally. Yeah. 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 There was one, but our base counter is no way. Right. So, is there anything I can show you? Maybe just a regular month based view of what is happening to your list. Uh, this thread I have favorited, so that's okay. There are new emails, really, are there? <laughs> oh yeah, hello, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Sorry? Um, I don't think that's, I don't think I can do that yet. Um, there is no advanced search yes, yet where you could have a multiple criteria, uh, but the tags here are searchable, uh, we can click on them, and you would, hey, wait. Oh, really? Huh. Well, this one I can delete because I have said it. This, well, that should, okay, strange. All right, uh, this, the, the tags here, you should be able to click them and get a list of the threads that have this tag. Uh, I'm not sure you can do both. Uh, I can do, you can do multiple tags at the same time. So. Does the search look at them at all? Would you do just a plain search or a big factor? 
Good question. I don't know. Um, maybe I don't know. But it's easy to do if, it, if necessary. Yep. When I did it, uh, just to ask, uh, would you uh, would you be able to do it on the SSC, SSC server or RPC, so that you could have something like that? So currently, when you send an email to a mailing list by RPC, it doesn't show up on the HTTP refresh. Right. And if you click reply, you will send it to refresh. If we would, if we were to integrate in the SSC server, then the QA function is still as they are asking it here. Yeah. Um, so it's something which would have to be optional because I guess I'm sending them to the limit. Yeah. It, I don't, I'm kind of, what What are your dependencies on that? What do you need on the server to have a so long running? Uh, an async server. So it's going to be a, a separate server. So right. So it's going to be a server on the side. And it's just doing uh, on the Django app, it's going to have a top of line of JavaScript to connect to the server. Right. Yeah. I mm -hmm. oh, okay. I I agree with will be, it will be interesting. I have currently not added it because of the dependencies and I wanted to make it easy to install first and so it should be optional. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be nice. That would be nice to have everything show up and, and, and update dynamically. Yeah, cool. Anytime. Do you have time to cut that? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Oh yeah, I can just answer your question by searching uh, this new interesting type. Um, do I get it? Uh, that will be by date, of course. Nah, I don't think I don't. Doesn't look like I get it, but it should be. It should be. It should be in the search criteria. That's very easy to add. Just a simple term. Like I don't trust my memory at all. <laughs> yes, uh, you can. Yeah, patches are wonderful. Uh, IDs are good too. You don't have to implement everything. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, working IDs it's even better. Um, yes, something else. Uh, when you go to my, um, if well, it's kind of hard to do that right now. But if I go to subscribe to this list here, I will get into. Mm, I will get nice error message. No, I will get into this. Um, I get into uh, Postorius, which is a web admin UI, and this here uh, is well. That's a view of the list that you will not see because that's for admins only. But you can go to your account, my setting here, and you can add different email addresses to your account. So if, you, if I'm logged in with, uh, with this, this one here, I can add my other email addresses. And when I see my subscription, when I look at my subscriptions, I will, it will collect all the subscription with the different email addresses that I use. I have this one here, but I also have this one here that I use to subscribe to different lists. And I have an historic address that is not showed here. Perfect. You will get two emails. Sorry? You will get two emails in that case. Yeah. How do you, which one do you see when you actually reply? I don't know. The, oh, yeah, I know. The one you're, you're logged in with. Um, but I think if you, if you subscribe with two addresses, I think you will get two emails. Um, because, well, why would you want to subscribe with two different addresses? In the no, other ways. Yes, you can still do that. You can still go to your subscription settings uh, and 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 disable mail delivery. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can still do that. Uh, let me get back to this one here. Uh, so 
the headers have changed? Is, is it the xdinter header? Oh, that's possible. Uh, no, we're not using mailman2 anymore. I don't think that is. So it's, well, I don't know, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Okay, I'll check it out. And let me go back. Okay, so if you have no more questions, uh, well, you can always uh, come talk to me about this, and if you want your list to move, just ask. I'll be very happy to try to, to do my new stuff on your lists. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Sorry? So yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can set HyperKitty to only show on the front page the lists that are specific to that domain, if you want to. So, so yes, you can have multiple domains. That's one of the main improvements. Okay. Well, thanks for your attention. Right, let's turn it off. See my man.